the shadow of Russ follows this one, like none I have seen before. His will be the fate of the chapter, each woven with the other. Hello my friends and welcome back to another video. In this video we'll be taking a deep dive into the story of Logan Grimnar, the formidable great wolf and current chapter master of the Space Wolves Legion. Before we get started I'd just like to request that if you enjoy these videos please give them a like. Even something as small as clicking that like button has more meaning to myself and the growth of this channel than you can possibly imagine. The algorithm is a fickle mistress and any support genuinely does help keep small channels like this alive and motivated. Liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing doesn't cost a thing, yet the value these actions bring small channels is more than can be expressed. There are other ways in which you can support the channel which I will mention at the end of the video. So without further ado, let us begin. Logan Grimnar is a standout figure among Space Marine chapter masters. Revered for his unwavering loyalty to the Emperor and fierce protection he affords his beloved Space Wolves. With over 500 years at the helm, Grimnar's leadership is marked by an unyielding thirst for battle and, with his mind like that of a steel trap, he is reminiscent of his legendary Primarch Lehman Russ. Renowned as one of the Imperium's mightiest warriors, Grimnar's prowess compare with even esteemed chapter masters like Azrael of the Dark Angels, Dante of the Blood Angels, and Kalgar of the Ultramarines. Despite his ferocity in combat, Grimnar is distinguished by his compassion for the weak, earning him admiration from the common folk of the Imperium. However, Grimnar's devotion to the sanctity of Imperial lives and protection of the weak has caused his chapter to come into conflict with powers even Astarte should not take lightly. He staunchly opposes interference from other Imperial authorities, particularly the Inquisition, and has clashed with the Ecclesiarchy over matters of chapter autonomy. His condemnation of Inquisition actions during the First War for Armageddon solidify his enmity towards them leading the Space Wolves into countless battles to defend innocence from the taint of chaos. In essence, Logan Grimnar embodies the indomitable spirit of the Space Wolves, fiercely defending the Imperium while upholding the values of loyalty, courage and compassion, traits sorely lacking in a galaxy oversaturated with treachery, fear and apathy. Logan Grimnar, the legendary Great Wolf of the Space Wolves chapter, embodies the noble fury and indomitable spirit of his people. From his youth on the frozen world of Fenris, to his ascension as the High King of Fenris and the esteemed leader of the Space Wolves, Grimnar's journey is a testament to his unwavering courage, wisdom and leadership. As a young warrior, the seeds of greatness were evident within Grimnar drawing the attention of the Sky Warriors who recognised his potential. Throughout his early years, he proved himself fearless in battle, wise in counsel and tempered in spirit, qualities reminiscent of the legendary Primarch Lehman Russ himself. Grimnar's rise to prominence was swift, marked by his unparalleled charisma and unwavering dedication to his people and his chapter. Grimnar's reign as the ruler of the Space Wolves has spanned over 500 standard years, during which he has led his brethren to countless victories. His leadership transcends that of common generals and warlords, inspiring unshakable loyalty and admiration from his followers. Clad in ornate Terminator armor, Grimnar towers over all save his mighty champion, Arjak. His beard is long and his fangs full, yet age has not made him weary. Logan's armour is wreathed with the pelt of the infamous Thunderwolf, Felclaw, its gilded skull acting as a crown above his head. Felclaw once terrorised the northern plains of Asaheim, which lie in the shadows of Fangard Mountain. Logan took it upon himself to track the deadly creature to its lair. Alone, Naked and unarmed, Logan fought his quarry on even terms, eventually biting out the Thunderwolf's throat with his fangs after a hard-fought struggle. 
seeking shelter from a fierce ice storm, Logan entered the beast's lair and there found two lone wolf cubs. It was clear that Felcor's ferocity had, in part, been due to the paternal instinct to protect its young. Unwilling to leave them to their fate, Logan gathered up the young cubs in Felcor's pelt and returned to the fang. The pair eventually grew into powerful Thunderwolves and remained fiercely loyal to their master for more than 500 years. When Grimnar rides to battle in the war chariot Stormrider, it is these beasts that draw the Fenrisian relic. Grimnar's early life on Fenris was marked by fierce battles and daring feats of bravery. From fighting against rival tribes on the Sea of Blades to proving his worthiness in the trial of Mackay, Grimnar's journey mirrored that of the legendary Primarch Lehman Russ, his bond with the Canis Helix and his induction into Asvald Stormrak's great company as a Bloodclaw marked the beginning of his illustrious career as a Space Marine. Throughout his rise through the ranks, Grimnar's boundless charisma and unwavering dedication to his brethren set him apart from his peers. Under the guidance of mentors like Ulrich the Slayer, Grimnar honed his skills as a warrior and a leader earning the respect and admiration of all those who served alongside him. When the time came for him to assume leadership of his great company, Grimnar rose to the challenge with characteristic courage and determination. Elected as Wolflord by unanimous assent of his fellow Wolfguard, Grimnar's destiny as the future High King of Fenris and the Great Wolf of the Space Wolves was sealed. Grimnar's early life on the harsh and brutal world of Fenris is a saga of bravery, cunning and unwavering determination. Raised among the Fenrisian tribes, Grimnar quickly made a name for himself as a fearless warrior and bold sailor, earning the respect of his peers with his daring exploits. The Sea of Blades, a treacherous expanse of frozen seas, holds the key to survival for the tribes of Fenris. When the Kraken Spur rose from the boiling ocean, Grimnar joined the Ironblood tribe in a fierce battle against rival tribes for domination over the newly emerged landmass. It was during this conflict that Grimnar's destiny took a fateful turn. Ambushed by the Sea Devils in the ruins of the Temple of Morkai, Grimnar found himself facing overwhelming odds. Alone and outnumbered, he fought with unmatched ferocity, his axe a blur of crimson amidst the chaos of battle. As the wolf priests watched from above, Grimnar's victory over the Sea Devils marked him as a chosen champion of the Ulfarver. Guided by the warrior Ulrich, Grimnar's journey continued with the trial of Morkai, where he proved his worthiness by slaying the fearsome ice troll Frostblood. Bonded with the Canis Helix, a unique gene seed enhancement exclusive to the sons of Rus, Grimnar was inducted into Asvold Stormrak's great company as a Bloodclaw, where his boundless charisma and wavering courage set him apart from his peers. Rising through the ranks, Grimnar earned a place among Asvold's Wolfguard, serving as a trusted advisor and stalwart companion to his Wolflord. When Asvold fell in battle, Grimnar was unanimously selected as the great company's new Wolflord, fulfilling the prophecy that his fate was intertwined with the chapter echoing the legacy of Lehman Russ himself. Armageddon Few worlds within the Imperium have seen as much warfare, devastation and grief as this one. Angron had come for Armageddon, and Logan Grimnar was about to remind the fallen Primarch why he had a special hatred for the sons of Russ. The Imperium's defences were meticulously organised. Logan Grimnar and his formidable great company of Space Marines swiftly arrived in the sector, lending aid to the besieged Imperial defences. Their intervention brought crucial time, diverting Angron's attention as he erected sickening monuments from the wreckages and corpses of the Fallen, instead of pressing his assault. Furthermore, Angron's power relied on a nearby warp storm, which conveniently subsided granting the defenders an opportunity to regroup and plan a counterattack. As Angron's forces emerged from the dense jungle separating Armageddon Prime from Armageddon Secundus, 
They encountered a formidable defense force, reinforced by the Space Wolves. Grimnar's commanding presence and inspiring leadership bolstered the morale of Armageddon's defenders, who were initially gripped by fear. Massive battles erupted along the entire front line. Despite being vastly outnumbered, Grimnar fearlessly led his Space Wolves into a relentless assault. They engaged the Chaos Horde head-on, launching a destructive assault across the river Charon. After inflicting heavy losses, they strategically withdrew, luring the enraged World Eaters into a trap set by the Space Wolves and the Steel Legion. It was upon the battlefield of Armageddon that the Great Wolf won his fabled axe. Amid the blood and fire of battle, on the banks of the River Charon, after hours of bitter fighting, the river ran red with blood and the bodies of cultists and traitor guardsmen were piled high. World Eater Chaos Space Marines attempted to cross the river in baroque armor barges or over bridges melded from the bodies of screaming slaves. The traitors charged across the flesh structures to reach the Space Wolves. Seeing a chance to turn the tide, Logan Grimnar led his wolf guard into the gore-clouded water to meet the warriors of Khorne head-on. The Chaos Champion, Aquor Doomflayer, charged out of the ranks of the World Eaters, his rune-encrusted axe cutting down two of Grimnar's wolf guard in the span of a few moments. Suddenly, the Great Wolf found himself fighting for his life, Doomflayer's insane fury pushing him back. With an incoherent cry, the Cornite champion struck the flat of Grimnar's frostblade, shattering it into glittering shards. Doomflayer's moment of triumph was also his last, as the Great Wolf lunged inside the Executioner's swing, ripping off his skull-faced helm with a clawed hand and sinking his fangs into the exposed throat underneath. As Doomflayer fell into the bloody river, Grimnar snatched up his opponent's crimson steel axe cutting a path back to his wolfguard through knots of homicidal corn berserkers. For the rest of the campaign, Logan fought with the axe, and upon his return to Fenris, he had it reforged, dumbing it, the axe of Morkai. In the west, the situation grew dire, as Angron himself spearheaded an assault along the river Styx, supported by the Cura Praetoria, high-ranking bloodthirsters of corn. They broke through Imperial lines, targeting Hive's Infernus and Hive Hellreach. The Imperial Guard and Space Wolves fought valiantly, buying precious time for the Imperium to unleash its ultimate weapon, the Grey Knights. This marked the turning point of the conflict. Recognizing the unprecedented threat posed by Angron, Grimnar called upon the Grey Knights, the chapter militant of the Inquisition's Demon Hunters to aid in the battle. Only they possess the necessary skills to combat a demonic entity as powerful as Angron. The Grey Knights wasted no time. 109 Terminator Assault Marines teleported directly into the heart of the Demon Army, where Angron stood at the forefront. Initially, the Grey Knights suffered heavy losses, with Angron effortlessly dispatching five Terminators with a single stroke of his Black Blade. However, thanks to the psychic prowess of a young recruit named Hyperion, the tide of battle shifted. The Black Blade was shattered, tipping the scale in favor of the Grey Knights. Amidst the chaos, Brother Captain Terramar Aurelian made the ultimate sacrifice, banishing Angron back to the warp for a century and a day. Angron had once again been defeated by the tactical mind of the Space Wolves, with Logan Grimnar emulating his gene father's lesson to the demon Primarch 10,000 years before. Strategy and courage born of the Wolves' Brotherhood would forever be the undoing of Angron's mindless rampaging and selfish pursuit of individual glory. With their leader vanquished and Imperial reinforcements surging forth, the Chaos forces crumbled. The remaining demons vanished without their master, and the cultists and traitors were swiftly eradicated by the Space Wolves and Steel Legion. Although the Imperium emerged victorious, the cost was high. 
only 13 Grey Knights survived the brutal showdown. In the aftermath of the conflict, standard Inquisition protocol was enacted, subjecting even the valiant defenders of Armageddon to the harsh measures reserved for those tainted by chaos. The remaining populace of Armageddon was rounded up into labour camps and subjected to sterilisation. Tragically, the original inhabitants were left to perish while the planet was repopulated. This is Jarl Grimnar to the Inquisition vessels in orbit. Heed these words, all of you. Stand down from your murderous intentions, and this day ends without bloodshed. Any repetition of the Trident incident will be met with a degree of force you simply won't survive. I take no pleasure in issuing this threat, but you forced my hand. Now, give me an acknowledgement that you've heard and understood this message. Logan Grimnar, ever the protector, endeavoured to rescue as many survivors as possible from this grim fate. His fleet escorted troop ships to safety, shielding them from the wrath of the Inquisition vessels. However, his noble efforts sparked conflict with Inquisitor Lord Gesmi Kosnaros, leading to a tense standoff between the Ordo Malleus and the Space Wolves. During a supposed negotiation, treachery reared his ugly head. The Space Wolves fleet was ambushed and attacked by Inquisition and Grey Knight ships, resulting in heavy losses. Grimnar, faced with betrayal, took decisive action. He dispatched Grand Master Juros with swift justice before teleporting to safety. Tell me, which one of you whoresons gave the order to open fire on our shieldless, weaponless vessels? It was I, said Juros. It gave me no pleasure but the deed was done for the greater good. The Jarl nodded. I've marked your face, knight. I'll remember it from now until the wolf time. You have my word on that. No Fenrisian ever forgets who violates the laws of sheathed blades and bared throats. Once those laws are broken, all rules of decorum and honor are abandoned. To betray a betrayer is never counted as a sin. Kisnaros tied his long blonde hair into a ponytail, keeping any strands from his face. Enough of this. The Imperium's woes will not bide while we stand here and make superstitious promises. Chapter Master Grimnar, you will surrender as agreed, and your wolves will stand down. Jarl Grimnar gave us his canine smile again, showing wet thangs. That, he said, will not be happening. Lord Juros of the Eighth Brotherhood had ruled with a cautiously ambitious hand for seventy years. He was respected by those of us in his brotherhood. Though scarcely loved, a warrior admired but rarely emulated. The lists of his deeds were more impressive than his unapproachable exterior might suggest. While he lacked a great many commendations for command, as a duelist and a frontline fighter, it was acknowledged across the Order that few could match his reputation and skill with two Falchion blades. A vital aspect in any blade master's repertoire is the ability to read an opponent's movements and react with greater speed than they can act in the first place. Juros was a master, and his reflexes were renowned. And yet, his blades had scarcely cleared their scabbards when Logan Grimnar's axe of blackened steel and burnished gold cleaved into our Grand Master's breastplate and throat, ending a worthy, respectable life of service with a single crunching chop. Juros went down, felled by the axe blow and dead before he hit the ground. The Great Wolf's axe, named Morkai, after some heathen Fenrisian superstition about a god guarding the halls of the dead, ripped back out, blood sizzling on its active metal surface. In the time it had taken for me to look back from Rawthroat to his liege lord, my own Grand Master was slain. That should explain, at least partially, how quickly the High King of Fenris moved. The crisis escalated into full-blown warfare when Fenris itself came under siege by the combined forces of the Ordo Malleus, Grey Knights and Red Hunters. Amidst the chaos, 
Grimnar led a daring assault, personally confronting Kisnaros. And if you believe Logan Grimnar killing a Grey Knight Grand Master was an impossible feat, this next act of defiance in the face of the Inquisition will certainly put into perspective what Grimnar is truly capable of. I had never seen a warrior sprinting in Terminator Warplate. He ran through the fiery mists of the teleportation storm and with no hint of the sluggishness I had felt on Armageddon. Impossible as it was, I swore I could hear the pounding of his boots and the screaming whine of protesting servo joints over the ship falling apart around us. Sparks burst from every racing step he took. I couldn't even conceive of the power and rage it would take to force Terminator Plate to react against its will like that. I fired at him. Malkodile fired at him. Our storm bolters crashed and boomed and blasted chunks of ceramite away with no effect at all. In the middle of his sprint, the Grey Warrior leapt onto a control console, smashing it beneath his armoured boot and kicking off with a jump high enough to bring him down on the central command dais. Despite his speed, there was nothing of grace or agility in his movements, merely anger and ferocious strength, pushing his armor's joints to the absolute limit of the sacred ceramite's endurance. Malkadai and I moved in perfect unity of those whose minds are meshed as one. The wolf's axe fell Mal in a heartbeat, cleaving his legs out from under him, I brought my staff around in a whirling parry to block a blade that didn't exist. The immense axe blade was a blur, coming from the wrong angle to crash against the side of my helm hard enough to throw me off the raised platform. I felt something crack in my face and fell back over the railing, dropping the six meters to land on the deck in a heap of numb limbs. I looked up, half blinded by blood and disorientated enough to lose all sense of balance. Just standing was a struggle I wasn't sure I could win. My face was broken again. Some part of my skull was screaming. Insignificant lasfire burned scorch marks on the old warrior's suit, all going utterly ignored. Several beams of laser fire even managed to punch home, drilling hot into the flesh beneath the plate, earning no more notice than the rest. The three naval armsmen died in turn their las rifles falling silent. The first and second died from bolt shells to the chests. The third from an archaic throwing axe slamming into his face and leaving him to jerk on the floor like an abandoned automaton. Annika bared her teeth as she reloaded her bolter. Aya! For the High King! For the Ayat! Kisnaros faced the old warrior, weaponless and clad only in ceremonial power armor. He said nothing. He never had time to whisper a single word. The old warrior's axe didn't even slow down going through him. Lord Inquisitor Kisnaros's head fell from his shoulders, rolling and banging down the steps. The body toppled a second later, collapsing back into the command throne. Logan Grimnar is as far as records go, Gabriel Angelos does not count, the only person to ever full throttle sprint as well as jump in Terminator armor. Yet, despite his valor and resolve, Grimnar ultimately chose peace over further bloodshed. With Fenris battered and Bjorn the fell handed urging restraint, Grimnar ordered his forces to stand down. However, the scars of betrayal and loss run deep, and Grimnar's resentment towards the Administratum and Inquisition lingers unhealed since those dark days of the First War for Armageddon. In the midst of the chaos that characterized the 13th Black Crusade, Logan Grimnar revered as the Great Wolf among the Space Wars rose to prominence as the beacon of hope for the embattled Imperium. Tasked with leading the defense of the Imperium's vital territories around the Cadian Gate, Grimnar's strategic acumen and battlefield prowess were instrumental in securing crucial victories against the relentless onslaught of Chaos forces. One of the most notable alliances forged during the tumultuous time was between the Space Wars and their long-standing rivals, the Dark Angels. Under Grimnar's leadership, the two chapters set aside their ancient feud, if only temporarily, 
to present a united front against the encroaching forces of chaos. Together, they marched into the heart of the conflict, intent on demonstrating that the combined might of their chapters far exceeded the sum of their individual strengths. The battlefield echoed with the thunderous clash of arms as Space Wars and Dark Angels fought side by side, their brotherhood forged in the crucible of war. Despite their shared victories, old animosities lingered beneath the surface, reminding all present that while the Imperium's enemies may change, the rivalries among its defenders endure. As the 13th Black Crusade raged on, the Fenris system itself came under dire threat during the infamous Siege of Fenris. Amidst the chaos and carnage of the Siege of Fenris, the defenders faced an onslaught orchestrated by none other than Magnus the Red, the demon Primarch thirsting for vengeance since the burning of Prospero millennia ago. As the Thousand Suns launched a coordinated assault on the Fang, the defenders found themselves locked in a desperate struggle for survival. Harold Deathwolf and Sven Bloodhowl, alongside allied forces from the Iron Hands, Ultramarines and Shadowhaunters, fought fiercely to stem the tide of chaos. Yet despite their valour, the invaders' silver towers proved formidable, allowing the demonic entities and their sorcerous allies to breach the Fenris defences. The ritualistic machinations of the Thousand Sun sorcerers conducted over captive space walls culminated in the summoning of Magnus himself. With his arrival came devastation of apocalyptic proportions. Volcanoes erupted, glaciers shifted, and the very fabric of reality warped under Magnus's malevolent influence. Even as the defenders rallied to protect their homeworld, Magnus's forces pressed relentlessly forward. The Fang itself became the focal point of the conflict. Its defences strained to the breaking point against the relentless onslaught. Yet amid the chaos, heroes emerged. Bran Redmore and his warriors, aided by the unawakened Dreadnoughts, stood firm against the tide of demonic incursion. But salvation came from an unexpected quarter. Eagile Iron Wolf, having narrowly escaped death, returned to the fray alongside Logan Grimnar and his allies. Together, they launched a daring counterattack, combining the might of the Space Wolves with reinforcements from the Dark Angels and Grey Knights. Yet even their combined strength was not enough to halt Magnus's advance. In a moment of desperation, Egile the Iron Wolf confronted Magnus head-on sacrificing himself to buy his comrades time. Egile Ironwolf howled in outrage, driving his spear of rust towards the monstrous Primarch at full speed. Ruby beams spat from the Land Raiders' Godhammer Laz cannons, potent weapons indeed, but rendered pitiful in comparison to the Lance Strikes Magnus had reaved moments before. The Crimson King snarled in impatience, reaching out a clawed hand and clenching it into a fist. Eagle Ironwolf leapt clear as his armoured steed was crushed by an invisible force, buckling like a paper sculpture in an armoured gauntlet. The Wolf Lord took up a Laz Cannon from a dead Longfang and knelt in a sniper's crouch, sending a dead eye shot stabbing towards Magnus's eye. The Primarch froze the lasbeam in place with a pinch of his finger. With a beckoning gesture, he caught Egile Ironwolf in his telekinetic grip, yanked him in front of his own kill shot, and released the laser from its stasis. The las cannon beam slammed into Lord Ironwolf, vaporizing him from the waist up. It was an ignominious end to a mighty saga, but it had bought Logan Grimnar the time he needed. Jumping from the Storm Rider at the edge of the chasm, the Great Wolf called out a mighty challenge. Magnus turned, a sneer of disdain on his Cyclopean features. No mortal weapon could harm him, and, thanks to the works of the Blue Scribes, neither could the enchanted relics of the Imperium. But the Axe of Morkai was not of the Imperium. It had first been forged as a weapon of corn. Bane of sorcerers. Logan leapt, 
The double-handed axe slammed into Magnus' chest, shattering arcane wards and piercing his breastplate to bite deep. In the distance, thunder rumbled long and loud. Only the psychers present heard it for what it was, the laughter of the blood god himself. The ensuing clash weakened Magnus enough for the Grey Knight purifiers to perform a banishing ritual, casting the demon Primarch back into the warp. With the traitors and the demons banished, the Imperials emerged victorious. But Fenris lay devastated in their wake. Cities reduced to rubble. The price of victory was steep indeed. Yet, amidst the ruins, hope endured as the Imperium began the arduous task of rebuilding and reclaiming what was lost. But the shadows of chaos lingered, casting a pall over the once proud world of Fenris. And as Grimnar and the Space Wolves set their sights on vengeance against those who dared to assail their home, the Imperium braced itself for the dark days yet to come. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, click that bell button if you want to be notified of any future videos, and if you'd like to support the channel further, you can do so on Patreon for just £1 a month, or click that join button down below to support on YouTube for just 99p a month. Any and all support is massively appreciated and genuinely does help the channel, and help me to keep bringing out these videos. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments section down below, and what your hopes for the future of Logan Grimnar are in the grim darkness of the 40k setting. Let's feed the algorithm gods. Thanks again for watching my friends, and ta for now. What was it, sorry? No, no, just do, do you, it's fine, just, just. Is AR like, Ayah! Yeah! I don't know, it's oh. like that. Ayah! For the High King. For the Ayat. How do you say Ayat? I don't know. 